economics. I spend in the summer 5,000 a month in utility bills. Same size grow in an indoor, I'm spending $100,000 a month in utilities. These plants are maturing at a faster rate than I've ever had plants mature before. The quality, aromas, size were actually far superior than indoor. Honestly, I would see what people are doing in greenhouses. It's, it's pretty amazing what people are pulling off. Talking to some of the greenhouse manufacturers at different trade shows, I think kind of solidified that, you know, it really is possible to do greenhouse growing in this area uh, where a lot of people didn't think it was. My name is Fadi Yashrudi. I'm one of the owners of Suspended Brands here in the Pacific Northwest. So the concept of suspended brands was uh, probably Jeff's. My name is Jeff Way. My brother and I and two of our lifelong friends decided back here about four years ago when Washington was legalizing marijuana that we would take a gamble and invest in the industry. The first business model that we had was really geared towards indoor growing. We were going to do most of our production indoor in a sealed environment. That lease actually fell through and we started looking at different properties that we could acquire. And so when that went south, we were scrambling. We found the nursery. I think it was at that point that we really started investigating greenhouse growing versus indoor growing, and so we kind of changed that model. That was the point when we saw the light deprivation, the, the fact that we could do five crops a year in a greenhouse. If we do this right, we're talking about a facility we can grow in year round. It was then that we started looking into it and really started seeing that it really may be a possibility. There were a lot of critics against greenhouse growing. There was very few advocates of greenhouse growing. So we started doing our own research. I grew in the medical facility that I didn't see a bug or a disease for four years. Not one bug. I introduced some clones into that room. The disease spread like wildfire. I could not control it. And that was kind of a turning point for me on an industrial scale. If I'm gonna do this and I can't control what's coming into these controlled rooms, then I'm not gonna be able to control it once it's there. From designing rooms that were small cubicle style indoor grows to a 12,000 square foot flower house that's on a perpetual cycle instead of doing small cubicles in a harvested rotation. So it doesn't give you the ability to stop that grow, clean that room, and then restart. Now we're on something that's perpetual and it's something you've got to consistently manage that. So that was a huge fear because on an indoor, if I see something that I can't manage, I'm just going to shut it down. Where on this, you can't shut it down. Perpetual harvest in a greenhouse is by far the best way, the only way that I would ever look at doing it. In the summer, we're seeing on average about a week and a half quicker, where a sativa that would take us 11 is down to maybe nine and a half, 10, and an indica that would be a eight, we're cropping to four seven. And trichomes are cloudy, everything's looking fine. We went poly, we wanted the, um, the head height in our grill, so we went 14 foot on it. We thought we were actually gonna give up a little bit on the quality side. We thought we would be uh, close to it, but we did think we were gonna be compromising a little bit of quality. Uh, now looking back on it, I don't think we've given up any quality. We were really interested to see how was greenhouse growing going to compare to indoor growing. It was a huge issue. Every square foot in that greenhouse is very valuable. And so when we can go from 55, 60% coverage on a greenhouse without rolling benches up to 83, 84, 85% with benches, it's a no brainer. The mass running right, we should be hitting our 15 pounds a day. I was concerned about issues such as humidity control. If I were to get pests or mildew, how easy would it be to remove that from the greenhouse without having to extract every single plant from the greenhouse, you know, and keep things clean. My name is Brad Durth. I am the uh, grow house manager, operations manager here at Fender Brands Receptive Group. I also help build the greenhouse here. I was what they would call a gorilla grower for about 25 years. 
uh, since the very early 1990s. I've grown on mountaintops, in fields, in basements, in attics, in bedrooms, you name it, I've grown in everything, although this is my first greenhouse. Industrialize the process and still have a boutique style product. Trying to find that happy medium is a real trick. The greenhouse that we have has wonderful airflow, it's got gas heat, it's a very dry heat and that helps us control our humidity in the winter time. The blackout system is marvelous. Even in the middle of summer up here, we have days that go, the sun comes up at 4.45 in the morning, doesn't set till 10.15 at night. Straight down the way here, you can see our intake vents, which have blackout louvers in them. Up above, we also have horizontal airflow fans, and they're positioned strategically to create a nice airflow across the home room without blowing the plants around too much. I've had no issues. This is the best growing environment that I've grown in. So when we first started talking about it, I had concerns, pest pressure, humidity, temperatures, uh, moisture, you know, all these different things that come with greenhouses. It really pushed us to take a, a close look at it and really determine what our benefits were, what the pros were, what the cons were in doing that. Economical savings, plant resiliency, being a greener company, those were all things that we wanted to show in our brand. The worries didn't subside until we started noticing that the plants were growing faster, our cycle, our flower times were shorter. Our carbon footprint is probably a fraction of what other growers are doing. The automation that we have in place today in these greenhouses really does allow us to reduce the human error. It also reduces man hours. With the automation, you kind of set it and forget it. We're currently in our flower house, which is 90 by 132 feet, which gives us roughly 12,000 square feet. The way that the property is situated allowed us to do an east to west layout where the side wall is facing the south because it actually gives us more sunlight with minimal shading. So the challenges that we have uh, now are really some of the same concerns that we had, but they're much smaller concerns for us. Are we ever gonna get rid of those issues? No, and I don't think that anybody's claiming that you will. So it really is a matter of using the resources that you have, the tools that you have to be able to maintain those issues. It wasn't only until a couple months ago that I really bought into the fact that we made the right decision and we were doing the right thing.